Good morning, folks. Welcome to worship. I am glad you're here today. You know, uh, today kicks off a really special time of the church here uh, called Holy Week, where we focus on the last days and moments of Jesus' life. And so today is a day called Palm Sunday, and we'll talk about that. Pastor Paul will talk about that in the message where Jesus comes riding into Jerusalem uh, to the shout and to the acclaim of crowds. Uh, but those shouts and acclaims turn into cries of crucify him by Friday. And uh, so as we reflect on what Jesus has done for us during this week, I want to invite you to all the services that we have coming up over the next seven days. Of course, we have our services this morning. And then this Thursday is a day known as Monday Thursday, uh, where Jesus celebrates the Last Supper with his disciples. We celebrate it as the Lord's Supper. And so at noon and at seven o'clock, uh, we're going to have services on Monday Thursday, this Thursday, uh, commemorating that. And then uh, this Friday is Good Friday, where Jesus suffers and dies on the cross, and we'll have services is commemorating that as well at noon and at seven o'clock. And then next weekend, uh, we have a whole flurry and scurry of activity going. Uh, we have our Easter egg hunt coming up at 10 o'clock. Right before that, there's going to be a uh, family service uh, specially designed for the kids. And so if you've got kids or grandkids, you want to bring them to that. It'll be right here in the sanctuary. And then we'll go on out to the field. Uh, and uh, it takes about three minutes to pick up all 30,000 eggs on the field, okay? If you've got a kid or a grandkid, you ask them to clean up their room. It takes three hours, right? 30,000 eggs, three minutes, just like that. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then next Sunday is Easter Sunday. Uh, we'll have our sunrise service in the courtyard at 6.30, weather permitting. Should be a great service. And then services 8, 9.30, and 11 as we celebrate how Jesus conquered death for us. And because he conquered death, the promise is we will conquer death too. We will rise. Now, because today is Palm Sunday, on your way out the door, the ushers will have a little palm cross for you. Feel free to pick one up or maybe an extra one for a loved one as uh, we try to fix our eyes on the cross and what Jesus has done for us. As we begin, would you join me in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you uh, for this week. Uh, you call upon us to fix our eyes on your son, Jesus. And so by your Spirit's power, we pray that we would do exactly that. Bless us and speak to us as we worship you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, we have many reasons to rejoice. All of them have to do with what Jesus has done for us. Our God loves us. He sends his son to us. And so it's in his name that we begin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, as we worship our God, in spite of all he has done for us, we don't always respond well to him. We don't always follow him. Instead, we fall into sin. And yet this promise is ours when we confess our sins. Our God pursues us, loves us, and gives us grace. And so I'd invite you to join me in these words of confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, 
and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. We take a moment of silence now to confess in our hearts those sins that we're struggling with in our lives. One of the words that is often used on Palm Sunday is the word Hosanna. Uh, It's an old word that means save us. And that really is what confession requests. It is a cry to God to save us. And when we make that cry, God's answer is always yes. Because God sends us Jesus. And when he dies and when he rises, he saves us because he forgives us. Because of what Christ has done, I can assure you that your sins are forgiven. And in God's sight and by God's power, you are saved. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please stand as we sing together. Our scripture reading for today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, beginning at verse 28. Jesus went on ahead of the disciples going to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and he said to them, go on to the village ahead of you and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? And they replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus. They threw their cloaks on the colt and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. 
When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles that they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees, the religious leaders in the crowd said to Jesus, teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, Jesus replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. There's a crowd who wants to sing their praises to Jesus, who wants to confess their faith in Jesus. And what they did, we are still called to do. We are called to confess our faith in our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so now together, we're going to take a moment to do that using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I'd invite you to say these words with me. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I'd invite the ushers to uh, come on forward and receive the offerings. While they're doing that, I just want to take a moment once again and say good morning. We are glad that you're here. If you are a guest with us today, we are honored to have you. And we hope that you'll join us again for all of our Holy Week services on Thursday and Friday and Saturday for the Easter egg hunt and next Sunday for Easter. Uh, If you want more information about those services, if you missed it at the beginning of the service, uh, just go to concordia.cc and you'll find a listing of all of our services. Now, if this is your first time here, do us a favor. Stop on by one of the kiosks in the back, and uh, we'll give you a little gift. It's just our way of saying thanks for being here, and we hope you'll come and join us again for, uh, for our services, and then if you have any questions, feel free to ask those. If you're streaming with us, either on Facebook or on the site, uh, do us a favor, just leave us a little comment and let us know that you're streaming. Uh, we, we would love to have you join us for a service on our campus if you ever happen to make it to the San Antonio area. You know, we're a church who loves to pray. We'd be honored to pray for you today. And so after the service, maybe if you walked in with something kind of heavy on your heart, we'll have some prayer partners who will be standing by just a few steps from where I am. Just come on forward. They'd be honored to pray with you and pray for you. And if you would actually like to be a part of our prayer team, you know, we're always looking for volunteers, people to serve in different areas. And maybe you love to pray. Well, we would love to have you as a part of our prayer team. Uh, If you want more information on that, you can send an email to Karen Rickman at KarenR at Concordia.cc, and we will get you all signed up and set to go. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Happy Palm Sunday. God bless you. Would you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, as we begin Holy Week, um, we know that it's all because of your Son's amazing grace that we can even gather today. Without him, we would be lost in sin, without hope and without you in this world. But we thank you that because of him, he has made a bridge between heaven and earth, between God and human beings, between us and everything that we need in eternity. Thank you for Jesus. Father, it's because of him that we know that we are called your children, and we can approach you as a child approaches their parent, and so we come to you in prayer, and we ask you to be with those who are sick, restore them to health, guide them, and uh, work through those in the medical profession to bring them back to health as well. Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with our nation, be with her leaders, be with President Biden, be with all of those who serve in governmental offices, be with our world. We definitely live in a troubled time. We ask you to continue to be with the people of Ukraine as so many of them are displaced from their homes, 
as so many of them have lost loved ones in this war. Father, keep folks safe, bring peace to that region, and we know that peace seems so elusive in our world, and yet you've promised to give us a peace that surpasses all human understanding. And this week is what gives us that peace, because your son has made peace between us and you. Father, we thank you for that great and precious gift. We give you praise, we sing hosannas, and we thank you that you have saved us through Jesus. It's in his name that we pray. And now together we pray the prayer that he's taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Palm Sunday here at Concordia. It's really great to be with you in worship today. As Pastor Zach mentioned, this is the start of a really special week, the week that we call Holy Week. Uh, And while every week is holy, in a sense, this week is special because we're looking at the last week of Jesus' life, the week where Jesus goes to the cross and three days later rises again from the grave. And so there's a lot of things that we could focus on with the scripture text that we have for today, but I want to focus on some people in this story, the Palm Sunday story where Jesus rides into Jerusalem and everything. I want to focus on some people that sometimes get overlooked. I want to focus on the owners of the donkey that Jesus rides into town. Now, I know that sounds strange, but bear with me because I think they actually have a lot to teach us. They actually have a lot to teach us about what it means to trust in Jesus. And to trust in Jesus when you don't really understand everything that's going on. 
And really, we're going to be thinking about those situations that we all face, those times where we're wondering, God, why is this happening? God, what are you doing here? God, what do you want me to do? Just show me the way that I should go. God, where are you? What's going on? See, I think we've all been there before. That's why I want to look at the owners of the donkey for today's story. And so we're going to read the part of the story that they are uh, involved with. From Luke 19, starting with verse 29. And as we read this, I want you to just put yourself in their shoes, okay? Put yourself in the shoes of these owners of this animal. Okay, so it says, As Jesus approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say, the Lord needs it. So those disciples who were sent ahead went and found the animal just as it had told them. And they were untying the colt. Its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? And they replied, the Lord needs it. So hearing that story, especially if you've heard the story before, doesn't seem strange at all, right? But just think for a moment, and maybe put this into modern terms, okay? Let's say you were in your house or in your apartment, and you went outside, and you see two people that you don't know breaking into your car. <laughs> and they're right in the middle of hot wiring it, and if you had more courage than I have, you would maybe confront them and say, excuse me, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> and they, j just imagine, imagine if they said, we're actually stealing this for Jesus. <laughs> yeah, uh, you would probably say something like, well, that's a great story, and you can tell it to the police, <laughs> right? I mean, this is kind of, it seems normal to us as we've heard it, but again, everything that's going on is not very normal. But here's really what I want us to notice, is that I'm sure if I was that owner of that donkey, I would have had a lot of questions, like, Okay, are you planning to bring this animal back? Uh, and what exactly are you planning to do with it? I mean, all kinds of things that I would have wondered, all kinds of things that they didn't know. And they probably did not understand everything that was going to happen. And yet the amazing thing is, even though they didn't understand why they really needed it, they still gave it. They still gave their animal. And I don't think it's because they understood everything because clearly they didn't know everything that was going to be going on. But the reason that they gave their animal was because they trusted the person who did understand what was going on. You see, when they found out that it was Jesus who was needing this animal, that was all they needed to hear. That was enough for them to say, well, okay, if Jesus needs it, then he can have it. Because, I mean, if anyone deserves our trust and our animal, it's Jesus. And with today's message, that's really the one point that I have. I actually do just have one point. Okay, not three points. I, just, I do have one point. And this is it. Okay? When you don't understand, you can trust the one who does understand. That when you don't understand what's going on, you can trust the person who does understand. And as I was thinking about this idea this week, I realize uh, that this is something we do all the time. In fact, it's something I do every day when I drive to work. And I want to show you a picture here. So I took this earlier this week. And as you'll see, this might look familiar to you, uh, we got Concordia on the right. We got 1604 on the left. And right in the middle, you got this huge pile of rocks. Okay, huge. It actually, it was bigger. It was taller than when I took this picture. They, they removed some this week. It was even taller before. Now, I have to confess, when I drive by this same pile of rocks every day for work, I get a little freaked out, right? I mean, look at it. You, you got this, this big, huge pile, and, and the car is going 70 miles an hour, and then do you see what's right in between them? Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell, isn't it? Because the barrier that's stopping this huge pile of rocks from this highway is just about two and a half feet tall, just lined up right there. And I, I, I promise you, maybe you do this too. Every time I drive by it, I just, I imagine all the rocks just coming crashing down on the highway. I'm like, how in the world are these rocks still here? 
And here's the thing, though. I don't really understand this works. I don't understand how these rocks stay there, how this little two and a half foot barrier is enough to keep this whole thing away from the highway. I don't understand it. But I do trust the people who do understand it. And I think there's even some of those people in this congregation. And so please know I do trust you. And I'm not that worried. I still drive. And that's really the thing, though. If you drive this highway, you might not understand how all this works. You might not understand all the intricacies of the engineering that's going in behind all this. But you trust the people that do, right? And you trust them enough to still get in your car and drive by it. And so if we are willing to trust people with our lives, essentially, when we drive anywhere, how much more can we trust God with our lives, even if we don't understand everything that's going on? We can't explain why things are happening or why things work the way they do. How much more does God deserve our trust, especially when we know that he's the one who created the world and he's the one who created us? When he's the one who gave his son to live and to die and to rise and to do everything necessary so that we could go from death to life, so that we could be forgiven for all of our sins. I mean, of all the things that God has done, all the things that he's done through his son Jesus, for all of those reasons, can't we trust God with these situations that we do not understand? Does he not deserve our trust? If we're willing to get in our cars, can we be willing to trust God in those times. And you might be thinking, okay, well, sure, uh, I think I I would trust God with all these things. Um, So what does that mean? What does that look like? What does it look like to trust God when you're not sure what's going on? When you're dealing with a situation in your life right now that is just totally weighing on you, that's keeping you up at night, how do you trust God with that? Well, I want you now to think about the donkey actually, the donkey, specifically, from the story. Did you pick up what was said about this donkey, what Jesus said? Going back to to verse 30, Jesus said to his disciples, go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Okay, now this is an important detail, because now I, well, I don't really know much at all about animals and riding animals and taking care of animals. Uh, I'm sure some of you do. You probably know a lot more than I do. But what I have learned is that it's not a good idea to get on an animal that hasn't been broken in, right? If you get on a horse that's like not been trained to be ridden, it could get pretty dicey, right? Because it's, it's wild and it's untamed and it's, it's out of control a little bit. But that's the kind of animal that Jesus took. And he was able to ride it and take it all the way into Jerusalem. And so I think about those owners of this animal, this, this untamed beast that they really don't have control over yet and how they keep it tied up. And it makes me think about the situations that you and I face, those uncontrollable situations that we don't quite have a grasp on yet, the situations that we really don't have control over. I mean, maybe it's that anxiety that is just nonstop. Or maybe it's that relationship that is just so conflicted and there's so much hurt there. Maybe it's your loved one that is struggling or your loved one that doesn't want anything to do with you. Maybe it's that situation with the job or that person with yourself the loneliness, the hurt, the grief. And you're wondering, why God? What are you doing here? What is going on? I do not understand what's happening. I don't know what to do. Do you see how those situations can be a little bit like that donkey? Something we don't quite have control over. Something we try to keep tied up, but we have not gained any mastery over it. See, with those situations, with the situation that you have in your life, imagine if Jesus came to you and he said, give it to me. 
Give it to me. I know you don't have control over this. So let me take it. Whatever this beast of burden that you have tied up, I need it. I need it. You don't need it. No, you don't. I need it. I need it to work redemption. I need it to work redemption in your life. I will take this from you. Let me take care of it. Give it to me. See, whatever it is that we try to keep tied up and under control and try to manage ourselves, Jesus invites us to something different. And what is that thing that you need to give to Jesus? What is it? Can you trust Jesus enough to give it to him? I know that if you do, if you trust Jesus with that situation, I think you'll come to realize that it's much better in his hands than it is in yours. And I think you'll see how Jesus was able to do so much more with that than you ever could have. And Jesus was able to work things out in ways you couldn't have even imagined. All of that because you could trust Jesus with the things you don't understand. That's the invitation for you today. Give it to Jesus. Let him take care of it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, um, for every person who has something that they're afraid to even look at, afraid to think about, something they keep tied up and they don't know how to manage, God, give them the courage to give that to you. God, let them give that up so that you can take it and let it be part of your plan of redemption. God, for all of us, we thank you that you gave your son. We thank you for the life and the hope and the peace that he promises when we trust in him. We pray this in his name. Amen. Now, dear friends, uh, one reminder, I encourage you again to, to grab one of the palm frond crosses on your way out uh, to remind you of all that Jesus has done for you. And know that as you go, you are blessed. So receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with his favor, give you his peace. As you leave this place, go and shine like stars as you hold out the message of life. Amen. <laughs>